You can pick that popcorn with your teeth all day long and you ain't gonna get popcorn. But when you heat it, you're putting it in an environment where the inside expands. What God wants his word to do in our lives is to cause you and me to go pop, 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 where the inside is expanding because the outside can't take it no more. He says, these are the mature seeds. And you know they're mature seeds because of their fruit bearing. Mm. They bear fruit, not, not little tiny fruit, full fruit. Fruit has to do with the productivity of your life. Okay, if you're a fruit, fr- three, there are three things that happen with fruit. Number one, Fruit always bears the character of the tree of which it is a part. You won't find apples on orange trees. You won't find oranges on apple trees. You know, you, you, it will always reflect the character. So the way you know you're bearing fruit is you're looking more like Jesus this year than you did last year. Your actions and reactions are more consistently in line with how he would act and react because your character is a fruit of his tree. The second aspect of fruit is fruit is always visible. You've never seen invisible fruit. You know what kind of tree it is because you see what kind of fruit it is even if you're not familiar with the, with the bark of the tree. You can see the fruit. No, that's an orange tree, apple tree because it's visible. You know you're getting to maturity when you're no longer a secret agent Christian. When your commitment to Christ is visible, it's, it's a, you're not hiding it under a bushel. You're not apologizing for your faith in Jesus Christ. You are visible and adherent to the truth of God. You're visible. You're not, you're not hidden. You're not in the closet. So fruit is, reflects the character of the truth. It's part, it's visible. It's beneficial. The only fruit that eats itself is rotten fruit. If fruit is eating itself, it's rotten. Fruit is always designed for somebody else to eat it. So who is taking a bite out of your life? Who's wanting to be like you, follow you? Who's wanting you to disciple them? Who are you benefiting in the name of Christ? If you are only benefiting you, you are an immature Christian. If you want to be served but can never serve, if you want to be helped but you can never be a helper, you're not beneficial. You're just a fruit hanging out eating yourself. And if you are a selfish fruit, you will self-destruct. He says, but to the fruit that goes to the fruit that goes to maturity. Well, well, how did I get there? I want to be there. How did I get there? Well, there was nothing wrong with the seed. The problem was always with the soil. Oh. If God's word isn't working, he doesn't have good soil to work with. If God's word is not working, if it's not doing in you, to you, through you, for you, by you, from you, what it says it can do, because it is the life and DNA of God, there is either no soil, rocky soil, or choke soil, not good soil. It is the soil of the life that determines the benefit of the seed. Because the seed is the word of God. But just like the sperm has to reach the egg if you want new life, the word has to reach the heart if you want a transformed life. If the word does not get to the heart, just being in the canal and being in the vicinity doesn't mean a fertilization has occurred. It must penetrate the heart in order to birth the conception 
of divine benefit and life. So the word of God must reach its destination. So all scripture is absolutely true. You cannot return to God and ignore his word and it is sufficient for life. And the things that the Bible don't talk about must be made consistent with what the Bible does talk about. There are things that the Bible doesn't talk about specifically, but you cannot adopt it if it contradicts it or is in opposition to it. So that raises a question. How do you get better soil since there's nothing wrong with the seed? Nothing wrong with the seed. It comes in seed form. That means it's got to grow, but it needs the right environment in which to grow. I've shared this before, but if, if, you, if you look at um, popcorn, you put popcorn in a microwave. You put it in the microwave in seed form, okay? But but you don't want to eat the seed like it is. You want it to pop so you get popcorn. You put it in the microwave. You put it in an environment. What a lot of people don't know is that every kernel of corn has moisture in it. Every kernel of corn has moisture in it. So when you put it in the microwave and turn on the microwave, the radiation from the microwave heats up the moisture that's in every kernel of corn. While the moisture that's in every kernel of corn gets hot because of the microwave and it becomes steam. Steam rises. So when you turn the microwave on and the heat and the radiation of the microwave heats up the moisture that's in every kernel of corn, the steam begins to rise and press against the shell. When the shell can't handle the pressure of the moisture rising, it releases it and you hear pop, 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 pop. What you're hearing is the inside giving way to the, the outside giving way to the inside because the inside can't handle the expansion. The outside can't handle the expansion of the inside. And all of that's happening because an environmental shift has occurred. You can pick that popcorn with your teeth all day long and you ain't gonna get popcorn because your teeth, that's not the right environment. But when you heat it, you get it, you're putting it in an environment where the inside expands. What God wants his word to do in our lives is to cause you and me to go pop, 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 where the inside is expanding because the outside can't take it no more. So the question is, how do I change the soil so that it's the right environment? Because it's got to reach the heart. It can't just reach the ears. You remember all the time Jesus says, he that hath an ear, let him hear. He that hath an external ear, let him hear what is internal ear. That is internally take it in, not just externally audio, just, just to, but let it, let it seep in. So, we got a perfect seed, but we have imperfect soil, but we want to be better soil so that we can grow to maturity. The question is, how do we do that? James chapter 1. In the study, I've got all kinds of scriptures about the word of God and We could be on this all day, but this will give you a sense of what you need to do to get the word to work. Verse 19 of James 1, this you know, my beloved brethren, fellow Christians. 
Everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Okay? Error one. That means you're not an exception. You must be, if, if you want, you'll, you'll stay with me here. If you want to change the soil, you must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Let me put it this way. As you'll see when this unfolds, you must be quick to hear God's point of view, slow to speak your point of view, and don't get mad when you and God disagree. Quick to hear what God thinks, slow to say what you think, and don't get mad when what God thinks and what you think aren't the same, because God's way will tick you off and your soul will throw a temper tantrum. So I'm gonna tell you that now. When you start with God, your soul is going to have issues because it's not how you were raised, it's not what you think, it's not how you feel, it's not what you want, you know? And so your soul is going, no, no. For the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Like my father used to tell me when I got mad because I didn't like something he said, I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. So getting mad at God, it hasn't going to change nothing. not going to change the thing because he's not going to change his word to make you happy or to make me happy or to make us happy or to make the world happy. Therefore, in light of this, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness, in humility, receive the word implanted which is able to save your soul. Mm. If you want the soil to be made right to receive the seed, we must be willing to address sin. If you are unwilling for him to address sin, we have, to, we have it there because he says it's there, but you must be willing to address it because he won't do his work if you are refusing, that's different than struggling, refusing to address sin. He says, all that remains of wickedness in humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your soul. 